All right, so family, glad to have y'all here. Glad I'm able to be here um, on time and uh, actually a little early. But I wanted to start off by just giving God a, a tremendous round of praise and thanksgiving and gratitude uh, for myself personally. Um, you know, this is what day 22 of this this fast. I've never had such a challenging fast in my life. I mean, this has just been, yeah, it's been something. Uh, but God, you know, I'm reminded of how faithful God is, that God is so faithful no matter what we do, even when we just, you know, we don't do right, we know. And I hear the word of the Lord is that partial obedience is disobedience. Part doing some of what he said is disobedience. And if we continue in that vein, then we become rebellious. And rebellion leads to witchcraft. It just it's just no coming back, you know, from that. You can get so far off into it. Um, but I you know, kept hearing partial, you know, well, oh Lord and I'm like, Oh, I did such and such and such thing and then it's like, Oh, but I didn't do such and such and such and the Lord simply says partial obedience to disobedience. Is this acceptable because I did some of what you said and I didn't quite do the other thing you said? He says, no, it's not, because it's all or nothing. It really is that simple. And I find myself, you know, really just dealing with that face-to-face, -face, just head-on. That's for me personally to something that I've been really, it's not the first time I've heard it, but since for me, Part of this, the main, no, I'm going to say the main reason for this fast is to clear myself of the things that are hindering me. The word says to lay aside every weight and sin that does, it just, it just distracts us. All of these different things that we allow to distract us. And God said, it's time to make a choice. And it's like, well, I thought I made that choice. He said, yeah, but you're making the wrong choice. So I was like, okay, just, yeah, all right, can you say it any plainer than that? No. But so that was the, the that's the learning curve that is ongoing because that's an, every time you get an opportunity choice that we have to make. But here's the part of the testimony that I wanted to share about God's gracious goodness and love and mercy and kindness even when I fall short. Last week, Camille came in, and she was telling me about some collector calling her about a bill that I allegedly owed from the place I was living in, the apartment complex. And I'm like, how much? And she said, they didn't even get to that point. Because collectors, you, they like talking to a strong wall. They don't hear nothing if you're not saying, here's my account number, and I'm going to pay it. They don't really hear anything other than that. So I said, okay, well, I'll call. I called, and I, I got a guy, and it was like, oh, well, we're here to help you, and blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, I don't owe the money, and I can prove I don't owe the money. And he talked over me and talked over me and talked around me, and just this is a recorded line. I said, well, if the line is recorded, then you can go back and listen to a word. This is exactly what I said, not what you said I said. And it finally, the call, I said, you know what, this call is over because we're not getting anywhere and I am wasting a good chunk of my off day dealing with your bullshit. So I, I hung up. I called the apartment complex. They never answered their phone, as usual. I waited and waited, called them back. He's like, nobody's answering their phone. I called the corporate office. Uh, they didn't answer their phone. So I told Camille, I was like, no, I said, if I owed the money, I would pay it. It's to keep it off your credit report, to keep you, keep that from impacting you. I was paid for that reason. I said, but they're wrong. And I don't feel like I should have to pay when somebody else is deliberately wrong. I called the complex, uh, the corporate office again. I looked at the Better Business Bureau. Oh, my God, some of the complaints were so horrendous. So one almost identical to mine. I called them back and I left a message and they called me this morning from the complex. And the young lady was very nice, and I told her, you know, what was going on. And she told me that the people who used to manage the complex before they took over, 
we're supposed to give them all the rental payments for September. They did. They kept back a lot of the money. So these people have been putting people in collections based on the fact that they're been, they have been told that they didn't pay their bill. And I'm sure there was a lot of people like me in the same situation that I was in. And um, so, I, you know, I told her, I said, no, I can prove it, sweetie. I said, I have, you know, I pay my bill. I can prove that I, just like I tried to tell the young man on the phone, I said, I can prove it. So I sent, um, I, I went on and I, I found the information and I emailed it to her. I told her I didn't get a chance to check on it to be sure, but I was like, um, they deliberately withheld funds and getting all messing up all kinds of people's credit reports over their greed and selfishness. And, you know, I depended on God to handle this situation. And I thank him for, you know, bringing about a swift resolution, you know, to it because I thought about the unjust judge. I thought about how sometimes we think we have to have things perfectly aligned with God before he will do something for us. And all I said, well, Lord, I'm your child. I may not have it all together, uh, but I know that they're wrong and something needs to be done. And I think Camille prayed a similar prayer to that as well. But I just wanted to give God glory for, you know, stepping in quick, fast, and in a hurry, and um, taking care of that for us. That's all. Well, I am here, everyone, just in case you were wondering. Uh, yeah, yeah, Carl, I, I, I literally just I walked through the door of my house. Amen. Praise God. Glad to hear your lovely voice. But no, I did. I prayed a uh, very similar prayer right after I hung up the phone. And I will, yeah, after I hung up the phone, went out from the car and said pretty much the same thing. Because I knew uh, when the guy was talking that it hadn't, it didn't happen to just us, that they had, that had been done to other people. And who knows what other people have done out of fear or anxiety or whatever as a result of what was done. No, it's not right. Yeah. Um, I thank God for pointing out some things to me about myself that I need to work on while I'm on, while I'm on this fast. Some things I need to kind of maybe lay down or like take a strong look at um, maybe some motivation behind some doing things or when something happens, what do I do as a result? So I thank him for opening my eyes to some things. I mean, I didn't know. And he, he told me. <laughs> so I thank God for that. Well, thank you again for that uh Oh, 
that's all. Yeah, that's all. Great job. Um, anybody want to start off prayer? I will. <clears throat> okay. Father, I come before you today. I thank you for your grace and love and your mercy. I thank you for <clears throat> returning to work today. I thank you for uh, a new, new insight. I thank you for a different motivation. I thank you for how you are so patient and loving and kind to all of us. And that you give us chance after chance after chance to do the things that you have commanded us to do. I thank you for a better understanding and more revelation into your character and the insight and discernment of the spirit that not only motivates other people, but the same spirit that can influence and motivate us to do things that are contrary to your plan and your purpose for our lives. I thank you for manifesting your grace in a greater dimension that I've understood in the past. I thank you for all of us who are joining together as one and becoming one, how we share those things that you lay upon our heart, how we are able to grow, how you are able to refresh and refill us as we move forward every day in our lives, closer to what you are called us to be, as we move closer and closer to the time of your return. Perfect in us, Lord, the work that you have begun in us, because you are well able to complete that work. I just give you glory and honor and praise, and I lift up all of us during this time, our entire family, and those of us who are gathered together on this line, on the prayer line, for the needs of myself and Father and Jonathan and God and Camille, and our household, Lord, and I ask that you come to that you open the windows of heaven, and that you rain down. Father, as we come into a natural rainy season, Lord, there's a spiritual rainy season that I see you have brought us through to this point, but there is more of a refreshing and outpouring that you have for us, Lord, and may our hearts and our minds and our souls and spirit and be open wide to see that which you have for us, Lord, and that we may be nurtured and that we may grow. May the rain, the spiritual rain, wash away all of the and be erosions in our lives, and all of the things that would hinder us from serving you as a loving and faithful God. And I give you glory and honor and praise to that right now, Lord, for there is no one like you, and no one deserves the praise and the glory except for you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Yeah, uh, you guys are cutting up real bad. Is it is it is it my phone or is it you guys? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Cause I can hear everyone real good. Can y'all hear me? I can hear you, yeah. but I couldn't hear Aunt Rhonda at all. Yeah, it's just my church. Cut out now. It's what? It's what? It's not completely cut out now. I can't hear her at all now. Yeah. Okay. So it's okay. Yeah, I cannot hear a period. I can't. Camille, you can find me to not hear. Camille, you're breaking up a little bit. I can't hear you at all. I hear you on the hallway talking, but I can't hear you on the line. We 
can only hear like every other word or so. From you. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Is somebody in the car? I'm in the car. I'll take you off the car. Okay, did it disappear? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Can we hear? Was I keeping you from hearing Rhonda? I, I, I don't know. Uh, she, I, I, she was going kind of going in and out, but I, I hear better now. Okay. Rhonda, are you back? I'm here. Oh, okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you. I praise you. I lift you up. I glorify your holy, holy name. Lord, I want to thank you for a week of revelation. I want to thank you for the many opportunities that were presented for me to witness for you. And um, even then, I didn't realize that that was quite what I had in mind, that it was actually witnessing to someone, Father. Lord God, I thank you that you are giving us more opportunities and you're opening more doors and closing windows that should be closed, Father. I thank you for reminding me, Father, that uh, promotion comes from does not come from man, that it comes from you. And as we wait on you, Father, to do what fulfill the plans and purposes that we you you have for our lives, Lord, I ask you to give us patience, Father. Lord, and that we continue to glorify you no matter where we are, no matter what is going on, Father, that we keep our eyes focused on you and not on the things of the world and not on man and what man might do, Father, because it's all about you. Lord God, I know that there's purposes for each and every one of us, Father. Lord God, and we know that you will fulfill that, Father, because you will complete the work in us that you began. So no matter what we might think, Father, that whatever your purpose is, that purpose is going to be fulfilled. Father, I thank you for dreams, Father. I thank you for us being able to dream big and see big things in our life, Father, that all aligns with you, Father God. Lord God, I ask you that as we dream, that we remember to say, Father, that it be in your will and in your way, and we go about it the way that we are supposed to be according to your word, Father God, that we keep the word up front in our minds, Father, so we're not detouring from left to right and, you know, going around the mountains 40 times like the Hebrew children, Father God, that we stay our course that you have set for our life, Father. Lord, the time is short, and we know, Father, that in, in all the days to come, what's left of this time on earth, Father, before you draw up your saints in the rapture, Father, that we need to draw nigh unto you so that no matter what, that our purpose is to be have a closer walk with you. I thank you, Father, for uh, bringing us together and that we're growing each and every week and that we're sharing, Father, and the things that we share helps one another grow. Father God, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells in us, Father. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that quicken us to let us know we're been doing things that we should not be doing, Father. I thank you, Father, that our ears are open, that when you're talking to us and correcting us, Father, that we can hear you. Lord God, give us an obedient spirit so when we hear what you're saying, Father, that we instantly obey. Father God, I thank you for Rhonda bringing it to us that doing partial right is still sinful. 
that was is not acceptable to you because you said be neither hot nor cold nor nor lukewarm that we are supposed to be on fire for you father god lord and in order to do this we have to be able to hear and obey your word thank you for the gift of discerning of spirits father so that we see, hear, and understand, and are watchful for people coming into our lives, people saying things to us, people praying evil spirits over us or casting spirits over us, Father God. Lord God, I thank you for the purpose that you have given, the gifts that you have given us, and ask that they be totally manifested, Father, in our lives, and that they show and shine, Father, that they grow in each one of us, that they are extended even further, Father, that there is a double portion of your spirit poured out over us each and every day, Father. Lord God, I love you. I love you. I thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, I give you the glory, the honor, and praise that you so richly deserve. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you tonight, Father. Once again, on this beautiful Wednesday night, Father, coming together, Lord, driving in our cars, Lord. But you know what, Father? We didn't let anything stop us from from joining in together. And, Father God, keep us faithful, Lord. Keep us pushing toward the, 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 the call and, and pressing toward the mark of the higher calling, Father, realizing and understanding that this is not about us, that this is about you, Father, and what you are trying to do through us and what you are wanting to manifest in us, Father. And that is your kingdom, and that is your will being done on this earth, Father. Father God, thank you for words, Father, and thank you for the revelation. Mm-hmm. Father God, thank you for the prayer pruning and the discipline and the not not condemnation but the loving discipline that you are bestowing on us as we're going through our fast and as as we're going through this walk with you father that you are lovingly teaching us and showing us where our shortcomings are and, and, and not uh, not having us feel guilty father but more but but encouraging us and just to letting us know that listen you can't do this without me we understand father that we cannot be perfect without you it is in our weakness that you become strong father father you have always been strong but we needed to see this we need to understand who you are and how great you are and it's through our weakness that we truly understand how great you are this is for us father for us to know for us to understand Understand, for us to, to, to not only see your greatness, but, but to want it and to thirst for it and, 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 to, and to lead into it, Father. And, Father God, as, as you revealed to, to, to my aunt this week, that it is all or none. And, and, and you know what, Lord? Fair enough, because we cannot expect all from you, but we don't give our all. But yet we want all prayers to be answered. We want all gifts to be bestowed. We want all revelation and all knowledge, but yet we are not giving our all to you and me all all the requirements that you require of us, Father. Father God, thank you for humbling us. Father God, thank you for for storing up the storing up the gifts and allowing us to see your way and, and to see that you're right. See 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 your righteousness, Father. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for revealing words that I have never heard, showing me and showing me things in scriptures that I and making connections that I have never been able to and able to connect, Father. Only you could have done that, Lord. And Father God, I thank you for more revelation. I thank you for more timing and, and, and more teaching and more growth. Father, and that we are growing together, Lord, but not as we are growing together, but we are able to take this growth and these teachings and go out and help others, help other other members of our family, help our coworkers and our neighbors, Lord, because that is what you have called us to do. Father God, I thank you and I praise you. I give you all the glory and honor that is due unto you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. 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 Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this time together, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for showing us so many things um, throughout this time of of prayer and fasting, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for your word, according to Jeremiah 33 and 3, that you you told us that if we call unto you, that you will answer us and show us great and mighty things that we just don't know. And, Lord, I love, I love that scripture because it is, there's so much that we don't know, 
But, Lord, you've been so gracious that if we've asked you, you have told us. We've set aside this time. We've pushed away from the table. We've given up some things just to be able to have that time with you to get to know you better. And, Lord, to to speak to us and to discipline us and to just teach us, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, for this time together, Lord. We thank you for the extra time with you. We thank you, Lord, that as we have gone throughout our day, that we have taken out the time to even just remember who you are in the midst of our work schedules, whatever else that we have had going on, Lord, that we thank you, Lord, that even though we may have fallen short in some areas, Lord, that we are moving more and more towards making you our number one of priorities in our lives. And I thank you and I praise you, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, over all of us, you know, this applies to all of our households, that there are things that are due to us and things that have been done to us that we may not even know about, Lord. But I thank you, Lord, for releasing those things that are owed to us, to us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, whether that be whether that be promotion, whether that be finances, whether that be just anything, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, in advance for the release of those things. And we thank you and we praise you, Lord, um, for just revealing things to us like you've never revealed those things to us before. And, Lord, we thank you, and we take your loving correction, and we thank you for it, Lord. And may, um, as we move forward with our fasting, Lord, may we want to be more and more obedient to you like never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, I wanted to share what happened uh, to me one day in Walmart. And uh, maybe, Rhonda, maybe you've heard of this. I don't know. So I'm in Walmart, and a woman comes up to me, a strange, complete stranger, and said, would you be interested in joining a prayer group? And I said, pardon me? And she said it again. And I was like, uh, what, what made you ask me that? And she said, uh, well, I saw you, and I was just led to come and ask you that and ask this. And I say, so what What? what are you, Jehovah Witness, or, you know, exactly what? Uh, what? Um, what is your, your connection with, with God? And she said, uh, oh, I'm Christian. I'm Christian, and we have a church such and such a place, and uh, we're trying to introduce people who don't know about the woman God. I said, what? And she said, yes, the woman God. She said, so many people. She said, we all as Christians. Yes, we're not Christian. I said, yes. <laughs> she said, we all as Christian. We pay, we pray to the Father. But there's also the woman God. I say, so you trying to tell me Jesus God, uh, Jesus God is a woman? You know, so I'm like one of these feminist type people. Okay. So this is what's going on in my head, but I'm trying to not be rude. And uh, so she said, no, 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 God is the father, and he's male, but there are many instances in the Bible that mention the women God, but nobody ever brings it up because, you know, the Bible is was written by a man, and it's very male-focused. She said, now, uh, remember, in Genesis, uh, the, uh, it says, uh, God said, let us create a man in our own image. He said, and he created male and female. So there had to be a female there. So that was just the first uh, 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 words that let you know that if he made them in their own image, then there has to be a woman there. Then she talked about in Revelation, I believe she said, where it's in Revelation that um, it says that the woman God will come forth first um, in the end times, and and people will know or learn about this this God. And so help me, I was the thought came to my mind, and like I said, I was trying not to be rude. But I was like, so are you trying to prepare me for uh, Beyonce being the, uh, the Antichrist? 
and um, she said, um, she didn't say anything. She said that, um, how did she say that? She said, uh, there is there is a uh, a woman God and it's a strong uh, person and that person you will we will see them in the last day. This person is going to come forth and that uh, you know about there being peace brought to earth and uh, this person will be accepted by people from all over the world. So we're in the middle of Walmart, and she said, I would like love to talk to you more about it. You know, if you – give me your phone number, and uh, I'll give you a call, and maybe you can sit in on one of our prayer groups. And uh, she went on talking, and anyway, back and forth. And, I, I, I of course, I was – I went online trying to uh, find these uh, scriptures that she quoted about the woman God. Rhonda, have you ever heard of this? Yes. Did she give you her name? I, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Did she give you her name? Did she give me her name? Um. Oh, who? The God's name or the lady's name? Yes. Yeah. yeah, the God's name. Hold on a minute. I'm sorry. Did she? Let me see if I can turn my phone on because Rhonda, I can't hardly hear you at all. Did she give me her name or the God's name? The God's name. The the, the, the woman God. Did they give her a name? She called her the woman God. Mm -mm, she called her the woman God. And uh, I was looking for the scriptures, and there are some scriptures. Uh, and I said, I'm gonna hold off on this and talk to them about this Wednesday. There are some scriptures, and uh, uh, when you read online about it, it talks about this is a new movement uh, to move towards the woman God. And it didn't say it was like uh, sexes where, uh, or uh, any social um, type of organization, but this is supposed to be a new movement moving towards the woman God. But there is, uh, they, they pretty much said there's no such thing. Uh, and there is no truth or justification to uh, this person being considered, this this deity being considered as a god. So I didn't know if it was just me. Because, yes, I know the scripture about let's make, um, God said let's make man in our own image. So I, I felt like it was totally taken out of context because he made, uh, Adam first, and the woman came from his uh, rib. So rib, yeah, yeah. So that that doesn't make sense. But anyway, I just I just thought I would share that with you because. Uh, well, I will tell you this one. Uh, now, here's what I heard, Aunt Niece. Now there is now now I don't know who believes this, but apparently there uh, there there's I don't know if it was in the Jewish Bible or somewhere they're saying that there are some hidden texts saying that Eve was not the first woman created in fact, they say that there was a, a that Adam had a first wife named Lilith, and she's refused to she refused to submit to Adam. And because of that, I think she got kicked down the garden and was replaced with Eve. Uh, apparently, there's there's a story behind that. In fact, I know a person who gave birth to a daughter and named her Lilith from that story. So I wonder mm -hmm. if that's the deity that they're trying to say, or or that's the, mm -hmm. the the woman God that they're talking about. That's a good question. That's a good question. That was, a, yeah, uh, Carmen, that was the first thing I thought about. But Lilith is mentioned as a demon in uh, right. uh, I forget Ezekiel or something like that. Yes. But she's mentioned yes. as a demon. But the woman that I thought of was Semiramis, who was Nimrod's mother. She was the first woman of power and the original Madonna and Child, the same one um, that Horus and mm -hmm. Isis, is based upon uh, all of the women who allegedly had a child without a man. That's where she came in. She would have been the first one that I know of a, a person who was actually uh, wanted worship. But, yeah, I've heard of the woman God thing. And you know what? It's, it's all a lie. 
And it no is. matter what, it's still a demonic force behind it. Yes, but I'm saying. Mm-hmm. in the last days, according to the word, all of this stuff surfaces. And people who mm-hmm. just don't want to hear what the word of God says, people who just mm-hmm. don't want to accept that God's only, only official representative ever on this earth was Jesus. That's it. They don't want to accept it. So they come up with all kinds of other reasons why they need somebody else because human nature says, I have to do something. It's just God's, the simplicity of God is foolishness to them. It's too hard for the human finite mind to understand or comprehend or even accept. Somebody did all of that for us, and all we have to do is accept it. It's just the right. fallen nature of man. And Satan got his hand in it as well. But that is all of that stuff. Like, like who told you to come over here and say something like that to me? See, I, you know, you try to be nice and be like, I would, you know, no, I'm not the one to come with that kind of stuff because she would have been, you know, we've been having to deal with some demons up in there, for real. <laughs> Walmart or anywhere else. Because, you know what, we can't allow ourselves to be, um, but that's why the Paul said to, you know, always be prepared. So mm-hmm. I counter their foolishness with what the word says. There's only one way. I am the door. Mm-hmm. Anybody who uh-huh. came in, if they didn't come through the gate, they came through the window. They're a thief and a robber. Boot them out. You know, mm-hmm. counter them with what the word says. So just for future, I mean, I don't mind listening to what somebody says so I can hear what they're saying and yes. so that it'll help me to know what I'm dealing with. But when it comes uh-huh. down to like that kind of foolishness, no, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to tell you that like Jesus said, you of your father the devil. Because mm-hmm. right now you see so much and how people are lifting people up and worshiping people mm-hmm. and you know, you know we how. We thought it was going to be Beyonce. <laughs> she ain't God. But you know what? I think. But you know what? I think. But no, no, no. But you're not wrong, Aunt Niece. I think. I think Beyonce is a part of that movement. And only because I saw some, because they've been talking about her lately. And uh, I saw some video clips of her in a group with like her performance before she danced. And she like prays and says, you know, Father God, you know, and, and Mother God. So I think Beyonce is actually a part of this movement. Yeah, yeah, probably definitely. is. Definitely, she probably is. Definitely. I wouldn't put it past her with all the other stuff that she's into and all mm-hmm. the other things that I'm not saying. Like, but people say it's like I don't care what people say about her. Uh, the video when she had all, I think they said she was dressed up as Pan. She had all kind of demons in this, like, seriously. That's the yeah, company yeah. that you she, keep. She, she confesses, you know. she says so, that she prays, that, you know, that Satan is her God. And if you listen yeah, to her well, latest album, which has been really, people in the uh, churches are really, one uh, pastor just point blank said that, she, uh, she's an abomination and she's going to hell. He pointed, and then it was all over the internet that somebody said that stuff about Beyonce. Well, half of his but congregation was, probably listening to her. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. I mean, seriously, so but you know what? We, we do know, she does. we do understand where these people are coming from. And the yeah. Bible says that the yeah. darkness gets darker and that yeah. the light gets and brighter. So we yeah, are the light. Happening. But see, people yeah. see, you know, Denise, let me tell you, be honest with you. She saw your light. She wants to tarnish it. Oh. And let me tell you, you know, like, oh, give me your number. What's your name? It's like, uh, mm-hmm. what do you need to know my name for? Mm-hmm. You don't need to know all that. You don't need to know anything about me. I mean, mm-hmm. and so we do have to be wise, like the Bible says. Mm-hmm. We have to be wise and who we're talking to and what we tell them because all of the muttering and chirping and the chanting that goes on, they are very faithful in that. Mm -hmm. They will spread your name along, your image. If they can take a picture of you, 
all of these things, as far as witchcraft goes, you begin to see it at work. People speaking things over you. And just because you may, I mean, you may never see that woman again, but we need to deal with what her real intention was because she could see the light and the enemy knows who we are. We don't always recognize them because we're stupid. I'm just going to say it. We don't always recognize the enemy for who he is because we're not looking for it, but we should always be able to see the enemy and recognize the enemy in whatever form he takes because they always know. And you know how I know? Because the little the demonized girl in Philippi was, uh, came up to Paul and Silas, following them around town. These men are servants of the Most High God. Don't tell me that demon don't know who you are when you are a true servant of God. Every demon Jesus encountered recognized him coming screaming and hollering, why are you bothering us? We ain't did nothing to you. Why are you over here messing with us? When he even came in the vicinity, they knew he was there. These people, because they are servants of Satan, they know who you are. We got to learn how to recognize them, not just some regular sinner out there, but someone who has a purpose and a plan. And you know what? I'm going to be honest. We need to pray over you and your household and everything. Now, I believe, because that's not a chance encounter. The enemy's looking Mm -hmm. to get a foothold in somebody's life, and they plant seeds. And I'm not, and you know what? what? I know you're rooted and grounded in the word, but we don't know what his real motivation was. But I feel like we need to pray Mm -hmm. and we need to deal with the spirits behind that Mm -hmm. so that. You are aware whenever you come, because, you you know, like I said, you, you work around people from all over, and they got all kind of demons, you know, all over the place with them. You, they yeah. can't bear, you can't open your door without them rushing in. So I believe we really need to pray over that mm-hmm. and to, um, you know, pray God's protection and his angels and all of that good stuff over you. Um, before we, anybody got anything they want to add? Uh, yeah, but you know, this also goes into what I taught last week on why, you know, the Mm -hmm. Lord let me know when I was going through the nine gifts of the spirit, why the spirit of discernment, Mm -hmm. you know, he, you know, he said that that's why it is a must. You know, that is not that's yeah. not something that we we hope to have. That he told me straight up, we must operate under a spirit of discernment. We have to be able to recognize when 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 God is at work and when Satan is at work. We have to recognize when it's yeah. the work of angels and when it's the work of demons. See, this is why he mm-hmm. says it is a must. It is not. It is not optional. We have to be discerning at all times, and this is why he. You know, and this is where I. You know, I, I mentioned that. You know, the, the way to become more and more discerning is that you got to spend as much time with God as possible. And number one, you got to know His Word. Not only do you have to know the Word of God, but you are literally you got to know God personally and how He operates in your life. You know, and and, and what and, and how and how he manifests in your life. But part two, of which I will talk about next week, I was hoping to talk about today, but time did not allow it. But I was hoping to talk about this week was being able to not only do we not to know who God is, but we have to know who we are. And we have to have that assurance of knowing who we are in Christ and and, and what the Father expects of us and who we are in him. And the perfect example of somebody knowing who exactly who he was was Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'll dive into more of that next week, and it's real juicy. So next week, everybody be here because I'm going to talk about next week. It's going to be great. Uh, When I say, say, okay, my jaw dropped, On this one, I was like, and and looking at the scriptures and the connections, I was like, oh, my God. So, yeah, hopefully next week. My plan is to talk about it more next week on on Jesus, but also because, you know, know, anytime Jesus walked around, you know that he never once said, well, I believe I'm doing the will of the Father, or I believe I'm the bread of life, or I believe I'm the way, or I think I'm, no, he said, I am. Jesus was assured of himself. He knew who he was, and we got to get to that same point where we is like, no, 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 this is how it is. No, I know who I am. No, I know who you are. I know what this is about. You can't tell me nothing. 
Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. Amen. Camille, do you want to pray for Denise? Camille, can you hear me? Sorry, I was muted. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I do, because actually I had a dream about today, um, well, last night, whatever. Anyway, I had a dream about seeing a large cat, like a lion or a leopard or something like that, Mm -hmm. and like literally sticking my head out almost like under a door to see where it was. Because it was walking around looking for mm-hmm. something or somebody. Mm-hmm. Walking to and fro. So, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. so, so, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's get started. Okay, Lord, we let's thank you. It. We give honor and let's praise him first for a, for a minute or two. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. You are hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus.
and to use that as fear to see where he could get into her life. But, Lord, you showed her and you showed us all that you were mighty, that you saw it coming, that she is protected, and she will be reminded that she is protected by your blood, by your grace, by your mercy, and by your authority. And may she be reminded of any other encounter that comes, Lord, let her be reminded of who she is in you and to speak those words out of her mouth and to rebuke, to rebuke it in the name of Jesus, to rebuke fear and anxiety, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and any curse that may have been spoken over her. We call it null and void and may return to the pit of hell where it came from in the name of Jesus, Lord. And she will walk in victory and in the authority that you have given her each and every day, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, again for the opportunity to show us this kind of thing, to show us, Lord, that this fast was not called on a whim, that it was truly you, you knew what was going to happen, and that you called it. And I thank you, Lord, for our obedience to follow you and to fast together and to share to share what is going on in our daily life. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Thank and in that Jesus. dream, I, I didn't see it get anybody either. But we were watching. Mm. And I thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for that Holy Spirit. Thank you for that reminder that I did not see it devour anybody. I thank you, thank Lord. You, Jesus. Jesus, I, I thank you, Lord. I'm reminded yeah. of in the Old yeah. Testament world they had, the children of Israel had the blood of the Lamb on their door. I thank you, Lord, for that reminder. Thank you. Because the door was shut. Yes. I thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Jesus. My God, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, and he is manifesting those gifts, you know, and it is benefiting each and every one of us individually and yes. collectively. You know, God mm-hmm. is not in the business of allowing anything to get past his centuries. And we are on guard and we are armored up and we are ready to fight because Amen. this battle is for our lives, it's for our souls, it's for eternity. And as we perfect God's righteousness and holiness in us. Imagine, just imagine what God will be able to do on a grander scale when we begin to share what we've learned and what we've gone through and what we've done with others, and they begin to do the same thing. I thank God that this is the tip of the iceberg, and there's nothing that he's going to keep from us because we love him and we are called according to his plan and to his purpose. And um, that encounter was not by chance, Denise. But God has already got the victory. And he had already Amen. provided us with a solution. Yes. And yes. that is just wonderful. Yes. And I thank God for that. Thank you. Thank him. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. All right, there. Well, I love Thank you guys. Um, if y'all want to keep you too. Appreciate sharing, you can go ahead. Um, I got to get back to work. <laughs> well, uh, thank God for all of you. For some reason? Huh? No, I mean, I was on my lunch and breaks. Uh, oh, I thought earlier today you said thank you. For yeah, I had been had been under the the weather. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had been uh, some cold and flu-like symptoms. So, you know, I hear it in your voice. Yeah, I'm not. My voice is not back at a hundred percent. My bank account says you can't afford to be just getting paid for two days out of the four. (laughs) But I was like, (laughs) uh, you know what? I did what I got to do, but. And, it, and it, when it's all said and done, God is still in control. It's not about yep. how much money I make. God is still the one who's my provider. He is my source. Yep. His job is just a resource. 
But in the meantime, mm-hmm. it gave me some time to, uh, un, you know, not make a mistake I made last year uh, uh, with a similar situation. God showed me that. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so, yeah, I was off. I took off Friday and Sunday, which gave me mm-hmm. six days off, which, you know, you cough, it can hardly talk, coughing up green mucus coughing fits and all of that, it's like, no, my job requires me to talk. I have to be able to speak to somebody without coughing all over them, you know, and uh, uh-huh. having my business. So, but, you know, but that's okay. You know, it is, it, it's, it's all right. You know, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Um, because when I think about how God moved in that situation with the apartment complex, you know, he revealed things to all of us tonight. You know what? Hey, that's, I, I'll take it. Because that's more, after all, that's more important. You know, my relationship with him is more important. He put some clarity on a lot of things. So, yeah, I'm expecting a lot of stuff to be different, but it's my choice. And I choose to be obedient. I choose to move forward in the power and the anointing of the Spirit. I want to be like Jesus. You know, he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Holy Spirit. I am, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's for me. (laughs) <laughs> that's for me so <clears throat> alright then but I'm going I'm to get on off now y'all can chat if you want to but I'm going to upload the video uh, try to get it on it tomorrow I can't promise but I'm going to do my best to get it uploaded uh, within the next several days I usually have them up by Saturday regardless but I'm going to do my best to get. I, I definitely want to get this one out there so all right. Love you guys. Love you too. Stay tuned for next week. I will have a teaching then. Be prepared. Okay. All right. <laughs> love you. Sure will. Okay. All right. Love you. Yeah, all right. Love, love you all too. Too. All right. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.